thing is to describe the function of amplification and the modeling of the ideal amplifier, which is basically the function, so the concept of the amplifier, and see if we can have many different amplifier types or if it is just one amplifier that you have to make. We're always building, for example, voltage amplifiers or we're all, always building something else. That is what is the topic that I want to discuss here. So let's start about the information because that was what it all about. We need to have a, we need to make a copy from the source information to the load. That's a function that the amplifier should perform and then it should provide a available power gain larger than unity but that's something for later. So we have a source, an amplifier and a load, and we have a transfer from source to amplifier and transfer from amplifier to load. So we can just cut it in pieces. As I said, we, as we do always as engineers, we make complex problems less complex by cutting them in pieces and then try to say something useful about all those pieces. So first is, we are going from the source to the amplifier and that means we need to have requirements for the input port of the amplifier. The second is that we are going from the input of the amplifier to the output of the amplifier. That is something that has to do with the transfer. And then we have output port requirements. We are going to go from the output of the amplifier to the actuator or to the load and we have output port requirements that provide optimum transfer of information, information, not current or voltage, information from the output of the amplifier to the load. What we don't want is back uh, uh, the transfer from, from load to source. And that is what we call unilateral behavior. So only in one direction, we want to have information transfer. And what we also don't want is information from the power source to, so the power source should not have information. You know, if the power is constant, there's no information, but if there's noise associated with the power, we don't want any of this noise to affect the signal. So we don't want transfer from power source to the signal source or to the load. That's what we want. So let's go start with the input port requirements and do some examples to, um, to make it a little bit practical for you. So we are going to talk about accurate copying of information from source to input port. And let's discuss information coming from sensors. And then the question that we ask is which electrical quantity and what do we have? We have voltage or current. Voltage is the open circuit voltage. Current is a short circuit current. So which electrical quantity, open circuit voltage or short circuit current shows the best corresponding with the primary information at the input of the sensor? So for example, for a microphone, a dynamic microphone, we know that the open circuit voltage has a very well a good designed correspondence with the sound pressure. If you short the microphone, let's say if your microphone is 200 ohm, you say, okay, well, let's divide the voltage by 200 and then you have the current, yes, but this 200 will be inaccurate. There will be nonlinearities involved because it's a mechanical impedance. There will be, uh, it will be not 200 ohm over the whole frequency domain. So we are corrupting information because we, if there's any uncertainty about this impedance, uncertainty is information. So if we then convert the sound pressure that was nicely related to open circuit voltage to short circuit current, we add information or basically you say, well, the noise from the unknown thing of the impedance is added to the signal and the signal to noise ratio is less. You cannot make the best performance then. So if the microphone is designed to have an open circuit voltage that accurately, accurately relates to the uh, sound pressure, then we don't take current from your microphone because any current will cause voltage drop, which means input impedance of the amplifier should be infinite or in practice 
much, very much higher than the impedance, the unknown impedance of the microphone. So it means we have an amplifier that needs to sense the open circuit voltage and ideally in concept, it needs to have an infinite input impedance. Let's go to a pin diode. That is a diode that can be used for uh, light, for, for example, uh, interfacing with a fiber. <coughs> and then if you look to the mechanism in those, uh, in those diodes, you see that, that um, uh, light on the diodes generates electron hole pairs and generate a current. So the short circuit current is very accurately related to the light intensity on the diode. But the diode itself, if you would leave it open, then it would charge up and it would go into forward and you use it as a solar cell that is not forbidden, but not for information theory. Um, so for information, because that has a logarithmic characteristic, it is temperature dependent, it is highly unknown and not very reproducible. So we are basically this destroying the good signal to noise ratio because we are adding uncertainty of the impedance. So you shouldn't leave it open. You must short it for the signal, which means we need to measure the short circuit current of the, of the pin diode to have information about, accurate information about the uh, light. A piezo accelerometer. So if you look, if you study the piezoelectric effect, you find also that the short circuit current is very well related to acceleration. Char basically, it's charge to, to force. That's the accurate relation there is in this, in this kind of devices. And charge per second is current. So current is the best reproducing relation then. Now let's talk about the transmission line. Let's talk about a transmission line and signals that have frequencies of which the wavelength is much shorter than the length of the transmission line or in the same order of magnitude. Then we don't want to have reflections. Reflections very much depend on the termination and the source impedance, the termination impedances of these of this transmission lines and they corrupt the signal. So, if we then want to have a nice signal transfer, both uh, the, the, tra the transmission lines should be terminated with a linear accurate resistor. So now look here, we have the input port requirements for an amplifier. It is either infinite, zero, or some well-known characteristic impedance, and it depends on the source, the information source. Let's go to output port requirements. We can use a similar, a similar kind of story there. So we need then to look at actuators, for example. So the question that we answer in this case is which electrical quantity, driving voltage or driving current, shows the best correspondence with the information at the output of the actuator. So a dynamic loudspeaker, although you can read many articles about people who want to drive it with the current, it is designed that the sound pressure is accurately related to the voltage on the loudspeaker. So, the voltage, it should be driven with a voltage, which means that the output impedance of the amplifier of the con in concept should be zero. Because then any current through the actuator, any current through the load, will not change the voltage. Otherwise, there will be a voltage drop across the uh, the um, uh, internal impedance of your amplifier. And since the current if the, is not well related to the voltage because you don't know the impedance of the speaker very well, um, you might have a kind of distortion somehow. A LED illumination. Well, we, nowadays we all have LED lamps and um, they should be driven with current. Uh, similar way, it works as with pin diodes on the other way around. The current through the LED is very well related to the intensity. And while the voltage across the LED is not so is related to intensity, of course, but there's a nonlinear temperature dependent characteristic in between, and you don't want to have that in the transfer. Basically, it 
corrupts the information. Piezo actuator. Similarly, the piezo actuator should be driven with a curd in the same way. And the transmission line, the same as before, it should be terminated with a well-known impedance. You can do this list for many other things. Like if you want to drive a motor and you want to control the speed of the motor, then you have to drive it with a voltage. If you want to control the torque of a motor, you need to drive it with a current. So let's say, I mean a dynamic, uh, magnetic, uh, just a DC motor or something like that. So this puts it all together. This is, we have the requirements for the output port. Now let's go for the total. If we put it all together, we just have three things for a port. We have infinite, zero, or finite and linear, which means we have nine combinations here, nine uh, different types of amplifiers. We call them the voltage amplifier, infinite input impedance, zero output impedance, the trans admittance amplifier, voltage to current, infinite input impedance, infinite output impedance, the voltage input, well, this is like characteristic output. You can select either voltage or current here, so that is not, uh, not important. So it is a voltage input in the characteristic impedance at the output. The trans impedance, zero, zero, voltage in, uh, sorry, current in, voltage out. The current amplifier, zero, infinite, current in, current out. The current input, finite, non-zero output impedance, you find here. And here, the last one, number nine, is finite input and finite output impedance. So both finite. So you have nine types. And um, we want to have them basically only unilateral. Later on, you can see that we can define more types. Um, but they are not uh, unilateral. So if you also use that, you come up to 50 times. <laughs>